Right, let's walk you through a general overview of uh, how this is set up and what it's doing so that you have a, more of a deeper understanding of it. And then, yeah, any questions, drop them in, like comments, drop them in Discord, drop me an email, and I'll do my best to answer them anyway. So we've got a demo and our Souls-like system folder. The one that we're interested in is our Souls-like system. So in Blueprints, we've got this world item here. These are just the items that are in the world. And all this is doing is in the construction script. It's looking at our data table, which is the data table that holds all our items. So DT items. And it's grabbing the static mesh and changing the static mesh that's on display. Now what happens is when you press E, so when you get close first, it sets off this interaction widget, which is all run via the interaction component, which we'll get onto in a sec. And then once you press the interact button, it gets the inventory component and adds this item to the inventory. So in our components, start of interaction, what happens at the beginning is a little bit different than what I've seen most people do, but that's just purely the way I like to do it. This add interaction input mapping just means that all our interactions are run through a separate input mapping component. So it means that you don't have to drag over a bunch of input mappings. This is self-contained. And whenever you add this interaction component to something, it will take with it the, the press E button with it as well. On that note, we've got the add interaction spear. This adds a spear collision to the character and then attaches it to the character, to the character's skeletal mesh, and it sets the spear radius to be 100. Then we bind to that spear. So when we overlap something, it adds it to our overlapped actors and calls the interaction widget to say, show this on pickup. And then when we leave, it sends a message to the interaction widget to remove it. And then it removes that actor from the list. And it sends it to the new one to refresh it. So this is taking it out when we leave our current item and refreshing it to show a new item. It's just a simple function where it gets the overlap to at zero and then sends a blueprint interface of the interact. And then when we pick up, the zero will always be the first item that was overlapped and then we interact to it and we run the interaction widget again to double check to make sure that nothing else was around. So if we do this, you can see here, I've got this on here. But I'll leave it and it goes to the next one. You can see it moves. So we don't have it on two. We always know which one we're going to interact. So now I press E, move to that one, press E, it goes to that one. So it's quite a robust uh, little system. It's not hugely complicated. In terms of what happens next, take a look at our inventory. We've got the add to inventory. So when you interact with an item, it adds it to the inventory. On begin play, we get our inventory mapping again. Like so, and then we cache our equipment component so that we can add our equipment uh, direct. We also get our stats component uh, to cache the stats component so it's easy to use. Opening the inventory, we call our inventory widget, and then we call these global functions, which is just open widget, and it means that you can use them in any place that you're opening widget and then for close widget the same thing and then we make sure we set our inventory to be invalid and then when we want to use a consumable because consumables are here we get the stats and we tell it which uh, stats change and how long it's going to change for so so you can boost your physical defense by 100 for like 10 seconds and this will handle it inside here We've also got remove from inventory. This is for when we select an item, it removes it from our inventory and adds it to our equipment. And then if you want to debug the full inventory, there's a debug here as well. And then for equip or use an item, we get the item that we want to equip. We get the index of it, find it on our inventory array, see what item type it is. This is like our routing system. And if it's a weapon or armor, we can equip it and remove it from the inventory. And if it's a consumable, we handle that inside the inventory. In terms of our equipment, this just on begin play, it creates the static mesh component and adds it to our character. So we've got our main hand and our off hand. And then it 
caches the stats component so that we know. Uh, so it caches the inventory and stats component so that we can access those as well. When we equip, we find our equipped items. So equipped items is a map and it has main hand, off hand, head, chest, etc. And if there's something already inside that, so we add it to our inventory here, we take away the stats that are on there, we find uh, where it was again, and then we add it back. Because a map, you just override the values that are in there. And that sets the static mesh that we set up before. Deep sea stats is the real uh, bread and butter here. On begin play, we recalc the derived stats. So every time we start the game, we get our stats that we already have, and then we calculate using our data table. So we find our data table. This is why it's super important that our row names match on our data table. And then we loop through all of the keys or the points that were invested. So we find, let's say the vigor, and then we loop through all of the keys that are in the vigor uh, setup. And then we add and times them together by the base attributes. We add them here. This creates our derived stats from attributes. And then we run our total derived stats. What this does is it gets our derived stats from attributes and adds it to a local derived stats variable, gets our derived stats from equipment and adds it to a local, the same local variable. This means that if there's a stat that's in attributes but not inside equipment, we capture both of those. And then that local variable gets looped through and the derived stats from equipment and the derived stats from uh, attributes, they get added together to make the total derived stats. Modify base attribute just changes the level. So every time we level up, we add a one to the base attribute that's listed. And then we recalculate the stats from derived and that recalculates the total as well. Modify derived stats changes the stats for equipment. So we get the stat uh, that we're modifying for the equipment and then we run it through and make sure that we're not, if we lose, a stat we don't want it to go below zero but there's a maximum of like ten thousand. but you can adjust this as you wish for like a hard cap and then we run the total derived stats again widget wise we've got an interaction widget this just changes based on the interaction type so that's all that does really inventory you got inventory and inventory slots so when an inventory is loaded it loops through adds the slots for each item in our inventory and then we bind to the button so that when we are clicking on one, we know that we're clicking and we're refreshing this inventory. Uh, currently, it's capped to four along a row and then it drops to the second row, but you can change that as you wish. Inventory slot's super basic, just an image and a item. It's actually a button so that it can be pressed. And when it gets constructed, it adds the texture, which is the icon, and changes the name as well. On it, it's clicked, we go back to the inventory icon, we go back to the inventory, and we can equip or use the button. And then we call this on button clicked, which is the binding that is just here to refresh our inventory. Stats is relatively similar, but we've got base stat and derived stat. Uh, both base stat and derived stat auto populate, so you can just add them to it and it handles it. And then on our stats UI, uh, level and gold is hard coded in. You can also hold, hard code these stats in if you wanted to, if that's your preference. So we just check what our level is and make sure that it's not changed. We build the stats when we start and then we bind to on stat changed and on max XP changed as well. So if something changes in those components, then we are changing it here too. In build stats, we're just getting the keys, creating a base stat for every single one and adding it to the box. And then when that's completed, we're doing the same, but for the total derived stats. So that's the total, the final total that gets added and on display. And that is just a quick run through, quick overview of how all of this works. So again, any questions or anything, drop them in the Discord, drop them on an email and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you very much.